Welcome back, everybody. I got a special guest today. First, a disclaimer. Nothing intended for illegal purposes. We're talking about history. This is way in the past. And, uh, you know, knowledge, experience, stuff like that. But I'd like to introduce Mr. Paul Renault Morris. How you doing, my friend? Oh, fine, fine, Mr. Garcia. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited. I'm like a kid in a candy store here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So first off, uh, how'd you get started in, with the American Pit Bull Terrier? You know, when did you start and how? Well, first off, I'm more of a game rooster man than I am a dog man. I've been in, do in the roosters all my life. And right. one Sunday, uh, they was having a, a dog show at uh, Rex Bird put on over in North Carolina. And... Uh, friend asked me to write, go out there with him, so I did, and I, I didn't know nothing about it, never seen a dog fight, didn't know nothing about it, and I was seeing a, a really high class of dogs and dog men, but I didn't know it, you know, uh, Crenshaw, Irish Jerry, uh, Honey Bunch. Wow. He just, you know, uh, dogs are just, you know, famous now, but I didn't know what there was then. But I watched it, and I said, well, heck, I can do this. <laughs> so I got got me some dogs and uh, piddled along there, and uh, I bred them just about like I did the chickens and conditioned them sort of like I did them. And... Uh, First time I went, I uh, was up at uh, Old Mountain Man Lester Hughes's, and uh, I won. Wow. I said, well, there you go. <laughs> so I uh, run all over the country, and I met people, and with the, every uh, match that I could, and I uh, got to seeing more and, and learning more, and I made this. Uh, one mistake, I wanted uh, dogs that were really, really, you know, terrible bone crushers, you know. I wanted alligators. Right. And uh, I didn't have the, the knowledge to know about defensive action. Just uh, a, a example is I could have bought Grand Champion Lucky Strike for four hundred dollars. Wow. But he I didn't like his look. I didn't like his bleeding. And I he rolled him and I he's all with defense. I said, Why wow, that ain't nothing. And uh Steve Woolridge come along and bought him, made grand champion and sold him for a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. Uh so but I'd learn uh after that, you know that uh, there's an offense and a defense. And uh, I got to be friends with Mr. Crenshaw, and uh, he taught me a lot, you know, just talking to me and stuff. And uh, I got with Bob Cox, and uh, Bob taught me a lot. And then I got with R.C. and the So-So Boys, and... We really treated them rough there for four or five years. Uh, we had some good dogs and had a good keep, and we was really doing good, you know. Mm -hmm. But all during the 80s, I was fortunate enough to been right there in the big time, you know. Uh, yes, sir. To get to see them you know, really great dogs, like uh, we had a 13-match show one time down at uh, Mississippi, and I, it was just champions and grand champions and big, well-known people and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I wouldn't take nothing for the time I got to spend in it. Right. Do you remember some of the names on that card? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Austin Blackie was there, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, that Daisy May dog. Uh, Ricky Jones was there. Uh, RC us had uh, a dog in it. And uh, they're just, you know, just big names and big dogs. Uh, and then there was other people that wasn't big timers that had good stuff like uh, Bob Finley and, and uh, Lester, uh, William Cable and uh, Rex Bird, people like that that just wasn't as well known, you know. Right. But top guys, you know, is uh, nonetheless, I used to follow all them people, you know. Yeah, and yeah. That that but, first one that you won, do you remember what dog it was? Uh, mm, I remember what my dog was. It was a dog named Jack. Okay. Uh, and I went in the... I didn't even think that boy's name that I went into. Right. How was Jack bred? He was a uh, bully old top dog. Okay. But and that made me really like the bully old dogs. And then I met and made friends with uh, Indian Sonny, and he told me a lot about them, you know. And then I went out Pat Patrick's, and talk to him and look his over, you know. And I just liked them uh, tombstone bowie old top dogs. And that's mostly what I had. Mm -hmm. I had uh, the last living son of Bolio, I guess, uh, out of uh, Bolio and Boney Maroney, the dog named Edie Armin. Right. And, and uh, then I was friends with Mary in Austin. I don't know if you ever heard of him in Louisiana. What's the name? He had uh, a lot of, well, he had Boney Maroney. Oh, okay. And, and uh, Hooks is Rowdy and, you know, uh, a lot of uh, Patrick dogs. And I went down there, and was, he was going to let me have Boney Maroney. She's getting old, you know. And uh, I went down there, and she was with, had a pup center, and she was acting real bad, and we took her to a vet, and the pups had died in her, and mm. she had cancer in her, mm. and she never come out of the vet's office. Right. So I didn't get to get her. I was going to get her and try to breed her to eat him one time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there was a man in Mississippi named uh, Otto Browning. Had some really good uh, Patrick dogs, you know. And I'd seen, well, we went into Ronald Bowles a couple of times, and uh, them Dirty Mary dogs was just something else. And we won some and lost some, but they was all real dogs you know right yeah what was it uh what was it about that that stuff because i had some boils dogs early on you know more heavy on the bolio side and uh -huh. there was a, there was a ton of bolio dogs out here you know i, I liked them uh -huh. too but what, what was about them pretty much that, that made you really like them you know well for one thing it's pretty <laughs> and uh they Scratched really, really hard. Uh, even if one didn't have, you know, a lot of mouth, mm -hmm. he'd hit like a train, you know, like a train, just drive one up in the corner. Mm -hmm. And they'd, they could eke out a wind when they didn't have much mouth, but they could make up for it just by hanging in there and scratching hard. Right. So, and... Seemed like he got a good percentage of dogs overall that was pit quality. 
Right. Didn't have to call as any. I agree. Uh, yeah, I agree. That's, that's worth a lot. Yeah, it is. You have, you have to raise them and feed them and take care of them a couple of years to see what they got. And then if they ain't got that, it's disappointing. But a lot of them turned out, you know. I think high percentage was part of their thing, you know. They yeah, real, real I got fast a high and smart. percentage of pit dogs out of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a lot of it. Kind of different from, you know. I did a video on this too. You know, most people like the, you know, the hard biter, strong, offensive mm -hmm. type. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Bolio is a little bit different. You know, yeah, they they uh, they wrestle well, they move well, got a lot of air, a lot of heart, scratch hard, very intense. Yeah. You know, the the first thing I look at in a dog is natural air. Uh, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. They can't breathe, they'll quit. Right. I had uh, a couple dogs out of uh, Tombstone and a, a dog named Robin, Williams is Robin. I had a, a male and a female both. It's both chocolate colored and not real pretty. Couldn't, couldn't bust a grape. But man, they had scratch. And this gamer you could ask for. Right. And so that, that tombstone bowl stuff's hard to beat. It sure is. Uh, yeah, there's people swore by it, you know, with good reason. Because like you said, they just, they hard to beat. They have the ability to go distance, too. They'll stay there all night, you know. Yeah, that, that's where it's at. Uh, this is... You know, at first, I didn't realize it's an athletic contest uh, more than it is uh, destroying, you know. Mm -hmm. the whoever scratches last going to win. Yes, sir. And as long as you stay there, you got a shot, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But another thing that really interests me about breeding the dogs, like in game chickens, if you breed a game rooster and a game hen, you're going to get 99.9 .9 game offspring. Right. And dogs, you know, you said if you can breed the two gameless dogs they are, they might get curves. Yeah. Uh, and that fascinated me. <laughs> and it fascinated me that there's no luck involved in, in the dogs. Uh, if you got the best dog in the best condition, you're going to win. Very good point. Yeah, I agree. Or sometimes a bird, you'll get, he'll be losing, he'll hit that shot and just, boom, a fluke kind of, yeah, you Yeah, just know. a little. Listen, I, I tell you what, <laughs> maybe one night, I, I met this boy, and my rooster killed him, and he was just flopping. You know how they flop when you kill a uh, chicken? Yeah. And... It's gap hit mine in the ear and killed me this stone dead. <laughs> and and I, I lost to a rooster for just flopping. Yeah. You lost to a dead rooster. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've had, you know, there's a, 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 I'd say at least a 10 or 15% uh, luck factor in the chicken. Mm -hmm. And that, there's not that much in the dog. Right. And that fascinated me. And, it, you know, this, I want to see if I could do it. Right. And uh, I did pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yes. But sir. I had a lot of help along the way, too, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a lot of, of good breeders and stuff that don't get much recognition. Did you ever hear of. Uh, Thomas Smith yes. of Russellville, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, sure did. Man, you know, most people have heard about him. That's true. That's where we got uh, Magnum and Bronco. Mm -hmm. and yeah, didn't he own uh, uh, Grand Champion Outlaw at one time? I, 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 think, he, I think he did. I've seen uh, Outlaw's last match down in Florida. Right. Uh, and he won, 
and I I heard that he died after the fight, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard, too. Uh, I know he was in terrible shape, was lucky to win. He just... Yeah, what was that yeah, show did. like? What was that match like? I, I didn't think it was much of a match. You know, he was an old dog and had been through a lot, and uh, the dog he met wasn't too terrible to us, you know. Mm hmm and it, it was just, other than him being a, a multi-time winner, I, you know, it wasn't an outstanding match. Right. Right. I, and then, too, you know, uh, the match before that was, uh, I think it was Sandman. And, you know, he put on a show. Mm hmm So, I don't know. Uh, and, you know, uh, Katie Marlowe, uh, Carolina Kitten, mm -hmm. she showed some really good dogs. I've seen a lot of her dogs in action, and a lot of them are really impressive. At Bridges and Bingo and some of them, you know, just yeah. really good dogs. Yeah, well, you know, people run with that. Red Boy blood, they really like it. I had a little bit of it myself, too. Ah, well, it's, you know, it's it's game uh, blood and long-winded. Uh, most of them I've seen wasn't destroyers. Right. I to, if you want to talk about a destroyer, you should have seen that Miss Rage. Yes, sir. I got a little bit of her blood in my stuff, too. Yeah. Talk about her. Well, then they, they you know, they bred her to Jeep. And the dogs out of that wasn't, most of them wasn't really outstanding, mm -hmm. like you'd expect them to be. Right. I've seen two or three of them go, and I wasn't impressed with them. But uh, her... She was just a destroyer, mm -hmm. an alligator. Yes, sir. And, and there was a boy over there in that same area I saw go a couple times with a dog named Jack, uh, named Jackie Spurl. Mm. I don't know what happened to him. I, I'm pretty sure he made grand champion with that dog. Mm -hmm. And they, he, I've seen him show some good dogs. I don't know what happened to him. Right. Yeah. And uh, then there, uh, of course, Bonnie Holcomb and that uh, yellow John blood. That was outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, we went into that uh, old yellow dog of pants one time, or and. He was a, a squeeze player. He'd go just, just do this barely enough to beat you. Mm -hmm. And he beat us. And uh, I tried to get him to go right then to put up a forfeit for a rematch. And he wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Mm. So I had something at home for him, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What what dog? Uh, I underestimated him. Yeah. What dog did you use when you lost to him? Do you remember what dog it was? Uh, me and Herbie Pack went okay. into him. Uh, I think it was maybe Yellow's third fight. And I can't remember what that dog's name was. Was it uh, was it Tojo maybe or what was that name? Uh. I, I believe it might have been told you. Yeah. It belonged to Herbie Pack. Right. And uh, me, and, me and Herbie was friends, and I went up, you know, helped him on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but, remember that name, too. It's uh, P-A-C-T, Pact, right? Yeah, P-A-C-K. Oh, P-A-C-K, okay. Yeah. yeah, Herbie Pack. Right. Living in uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went down there at some you know, Fletcher Chavis and uh, uh, John, uh, Frank Jacobs. We went into both them assassin dogs, mm. Jacobses, 
the same night, uh, me and R.C. and us with uh, two litter mates to Grand Champion Fritz. And, of course, we lost them both and just absolutely wasted two good dogs. Mm. They, they wasn't like 20 months old, and they really put a hurting on them older, experienced dogs, but they was too smart, too pit-wise for them young dogs, you know. Yes, sir. And we just wasted them, and did go with Fritz because R.C.'s wife liked it, you know, like Fritz. And uh, so it didn't do nothing with him until he got, you know, grown and then made champion with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was out here for a bit. I think uh, Tito and the local boys did him for his last one or maybe something like that. Uh-huh. Uh, was you at that show, Fritz, and uh, champion Uncle Bud and, and Badger? Yeah. Okay. We went into Badger. Me and uh, Bob Cox went into Badger one time. Right. With a, a dog that Bob had got from uh, Ronnie Hyde, a dog named Bloody Billy. Right. And uh, I told him, Matter of fact, Money got mad at me. I told him, I said, as soon as Badger got to biting him, he let up. Mm. We we had fought that dog one time before in the Norman Kimmer down there in uh, Louisiana, and uh, he looked pretty good against that dog. But Badger hurt him so bad, you know what he. After he really clamped down on him a time or two, you know, it was. Yeah, I lost a badger, too. <laughs> I had <laughs> a little, in fact, I had a him. little Boyle's dog named Ronnie that I had yeah. won one with. And then I went into badger after that. And he, yeah, he was a, he was a rough dog. He loved them kidney stifles like that, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he clamped down on that dog's shoulder once and then he stifled once. And. It took a bite out of him. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, did you have uh, did you have something to do with uh, Champion Bronco or Magnum or or? Yeah, uh, I I give uh, uh, RC a thousand dollars for twenty five percent interest in Bronco. And I, well, you know, of course, I got the bet on him, and, and we, you know, we got to show him and all. And uh, I had, uh, let's see, I had two pups out of him. Had one out of Bronco and Ruby, and one out of Bronco and I believe it was Candy. Mm. And uh, one out of Candy, no, but yeah, the one out of Candy. I named him Kudzu, and uh, ended up sending him to uh, Guam. And uh, God done really, really good with him over. Nice. Yeah, and, I sent uh, some dogs to Guam too. What what style was Bronco, or or what would you say? How how did he fight? He done just what he needed to do. He could hold one out. He could swap with it. Uh, he just done everything right. And you know, he was a cold dog. Bronco mm. was. He didn't start until he was pretty old. Oh, wow, really? Uh, and finally got him started and still was just using for a roll dog, son. And uh, then we decided to match him. After he put him through a keep, he turned into super dog. <laughs> 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 you know, and... Heck, uh, I just, I liked, I, I loved that dog. I, I liked his looks. I, I liked his, everything about him. Mm -hmm. And he may have went into some tough dogs, too. Uh, Ramrod dog. That's uh, right. And then Ramrod come back, I think, beat, didn't he come back and beat Champion Blaze or somebody? Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, he went and, uh, uh, well over an hour against Bronco, and then he went well over an hour after that and beat Blitz, champion Blitz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then we went into that Indian Joe dog. From Boyles. Uh, Raw Bulls. And let me tell you about that, that Indian Joe dog made a scratch when I would have bet 500 that he could stand on his feet. Wow. I mean, he just a stumbling, falling scratch. I offered Bowles 500 for him if he'd just pick him up. And I knew he'd die, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I told him I'd give him 500 if he'd just pick him up. But he didn't. And I mean, he was... Bronco was dragging him around in the pitch, you know, mm -hmm. by the throat. And you know, I didn't want to see all that. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, that uh, was a, that was a Indian Joe was from the Bobby Junior Dirty Mary breeding. Yeah, yeah, he was a two-time winner, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. heck of a dog. Mm -hmm. And then I see we went into that hubcap dog, and then I think we went into another one. Yeah, uh, Did, didn't Bronco get uh, best in show all all of his shows or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. What they was uh, every every show they was from five to eleven matches, and he got best in show all three times mm -hmm. and made champion. But the last time he got hurt, you know, I mean, he got his toes teeth off and. Uh, where dog bit him in the back of the neck. He couldn't hold his head up good, mm. you know. Yeah. So, uh, he went to uh, Saul then. Mm -hmm. Or Saul. Right. Yeah, yeah. They had a... Uh, I know the Soso boy, they had a lot of the Finley's bowl bred dogs bred different ways and... I saw some mm -hmm. of them out here from the Soso boys, you know, Robbie and them. Tito had well, some of that Well, Robbie's the only one left, I reckon. Uh, Is he? You know, R.C. did. Yep. And uh, Hicks, I think, went, to, went out west or something, went to California or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robbie's the only one left. Mm -hmm. I let Robbie have a, a, a posse bitch that I had named Ada mm -hmm. and uh, he had a old little posse dog that just produced a lot of a lot of good dogs and I since he was a little posse dog I give Robbie that uh, La posse bitch and she come right off the tent down there at La posse's place And he done really good with some of the offspring. Yeah, yeah, the ones I seen the good ones, they were pretty rough. Those the posse dogs, they were pretty solid dogs, you know. Yeah, yeah, they wasn't really flashy. I lost with that Ada, but she was making the scratch, but she was going slow, and my daughter was at the side over the side. And she clapped her hand and said, come on, Ada, come on, girl. And Ada stopped and turned and looked at her, and I got counted out. Mm. Yeah. Hell, she knew your daughter, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so when after that, my daughter always had to sit in the other guy's corner right behind him. Right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, just so many things happen and I've seen so much and a lot of it kind of runs together on me now. Yeah. Yeah. Get that. I get that uh, way, too. I forget a lot, you know. Yeah. Now, now that Edie, I mean, did he throw good dogs for you? Yeah. Uh, well, he, he throwed uh Grand Champion Scooter Reds, you know. Oh, right, yeah. From uh, Manzi Payne. Payne. Yeah. Out of Payne's Black Annie. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, those one named Pinky and one named Foxtail that wanted a fight or two. Right. And uh, won some little matches around here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he had a he had a bobtail, didn't he? Yeah, his bobtail. Uh huh. They said he got ringworm around his tail, and they had to take it off. Oh, okay. But see, uh, the STP boys up there got him from Patrick, and then they showed him well when he's just a pup, nearly a like. I think it's only 18 or 19 yeah. months old. Was it STP or was it Uptown Boys? Uptown Boys, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's right. Uptown Boys. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. And they kind of was uh, rough on him, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he told the, uh, not, not the super dogs, you know, but good dogs. Steady. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, like I said, I, I, I like that blood in different ways. And that, the Tombstone Red Baby stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. that, man, they use them dogs every, just about everywhere, you know. Yeah, it was just something about that click, uh, them two dogs. Mm -hmm. Blood, this, well, Maloney dogs, you know, was good dogs anyway. Right. And... I thought it was awful funny about Bowling, you know, uh, if uh, Carver bred him and Bennett got, Clayton got him and then Nothing got him and then Sonny got him and then ended up in Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And Boudreaux had him. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then Dennis Ruth had him. Sure did. I got a picture of him and Dennis Ruth when they was up there in Oregon, you yeah, know. Yeah, I think I got that same picture. Yep. Dennis down on his knee holding him. Yep, yep. Yeah. 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 And the Bolillo, he's young there. He's not that old in yeah. that picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He can tell. Well, he bred him. I forgot which female he bred him to, but he got uh, Kramer, champion Kramer out of that. Well, he and... um, had a brother named Handsome. Mm. That went over to I think Holland yeah, or Holland. somewhere. You're right. Yeah. And done good. And then he had a sister, a little mate named Kona. That was a pretty good dog. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But that Bowie old stuff. I think he was one of the great producers. I agree. And his blood really shows up. You know. I mean it. It carries on. Yes, sir. Yeah, it does. It's strong. And it'll put the, uh, you know, it'll put, you know, maybe you you lacking something, it'll put it in there, you know, whether it's uh, speed or air or heart or so, intelligence, you know, they smart, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he'd, be, he'd get in the car with me, sit up in the front seat, sit up in the seat, and look <laughs> out the window. And... Yeah. It's like it's somebody, you know, yeah. Yeah. and he minded. You could tell him, you know, sit, lay down, there you go. do anything. Yeah, no, they yeah. known for that, yeah. And yeah. the pups I had off of them, they were real smart, the little dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't get uh, too big either, huh? No, huh? I don't like great old big dogs. Yeah, me either. I'm not very big myself. Yeah, like me it's too. It's hard to deal with them. Yeah, yeah. Imagine, you know, I, I had one, a 54-pounder, a couple of them, 54-pounders. and oh. If you got to go any time with them, man, all that, you know, you handle and scratch and all that stuff, by the time you're done, you're, back, you're dead. You know, your knees hurt yeah. and your back hurts. And all. Yeah. And little bitty dog, yeah, you just snatch them up, you know, like a toy, you know, and you just, you're good, you know. Yeah, it'll, uh. <laughs> Now a big rooster's a, a chore for me, you know. <laughs> yeah. One that weighs six pounds, you right. know, it's a real, real chore. Right. Yeah. The uh, I used to, back in the day, you know, I used to have shows at my house, you know. Mm hmm And then every every two weeks, I think it was from September uh, till 
I forget, but we I'd host hack fights with the roosters, you know. Uh huh. People just show up and they put the weights together, so I did that. So I had my dog pit on one side of the patio in the back, and then I had a rooster pit on the other side on the cement, you know. Uh huh. I put it on the cement. I filled it with dirt, you know. Yeah. So we do that back and forth, but I like them birds too, you know. Yeah, there's old old pit up behind my house where I used to roll a dog, you know. Mm hmm. And uh. It's caved in now, sort of, you know, about half. And uh, my bitch, Great Pyrenees bitch, mm -hmm. she always goes up there to have pups. Oh, wow. And uh, she'll stay up there with them until she weans them, and then she'll bring them down. Hmm. Yeah, but that's cool. They talk about breeding dogs. Something that's always bothered me is when somebody makes a really good breeding how come they don't repeat it yeah like i've got chickens i've got a breed of chickens that i've had for over 50 years you know just lion bread and hen bread and i don't breed no other breed into them mm -hmm. yeah but it seems like every time you see somebody made a good breeding that's the only time they ever done it yeah yeah, well, the, well, there there is some people, you know, there's repeat beer breedings out there, but to your point, you're right, they don't do it a lot, you know? Yeah. They don't, uh, you know, you never see, uh, you know, pups from three or four or five repeat breedings, you know? You'd think, yeah. if it worked, why not stick with that, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, with, with roosters, you see that a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's probably uh, different reasons why, but uh, it doesn't happen as often as you'd think. You're right. Yeah, a lot of it, though, goes uh, basically the same. Good health, good care, good blood. That's what it takes to win. Right, right. Now, when you did several of those repeat breedings, you, you pretty much got the same quality. Yeah, yeah. So usually improved it some if there, I could. There you go. But at least held my own. But, uh, you know, in chickens, you test them more. Uh, you know, I could, in, the, in one season, I might show one four or five times, you know. Right. Right. And you, you prefer gaff or short knife or what? Gaff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a gaff man. Yeah, that's what they do in the South. <laughs> I've uh, I've I've done the short knife in Mexico, Central America, and uh -huh. and I went to Philippines a couple times with a long knife. Well, yeah. And and whipped them good. Yeah. But I just don't like it. Right. It, it's not the quality I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It, it, all them people, short knife, long knife people. Gotta come back to us gaff people for brood stock. Mm. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. You never hear of any breed of chickens coming from short knife or long knife. It's right. always from gaff chickens. There you go. Hatch, Kelso, White Ackle. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a tip uh, for you guys out there that like them birds, you know? Oh, yeah, I, I know a lot of people in California. Uh -huh. I had a friend that uh, owned a kid up there at Ehrenburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, used to go out there some visiting. Nice, nice. Uh, it's, I've done that all my life. You know, uh, I'd say since I was 12 or 13. Right. Was you born to that, or you just got interested? No. Or... When I was in the third grade at school, when I walked home, I had to go by this old man's house that had chickens out in the yard, you know. And I'd stop and look through the fence at them, and roosters in the pens, you know, and all. And something about them just brought me to them. And uh, finally, I talked to him some, you know. Mm -hmm. And he... He seen that I liked it, and he helped me along. And then there was a man 
lived not far from where I lived, that put out a magazine called Game Foul News. And I you know I'd go over and help him with that magazine and make a condition and feed and stuff, you know. And help him around there and he'd take me to fight with him, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just man, I just I love it. Yeah. I think they're impressive just to look at them, you know. You can see the muscle on them and the colors, you know, and the way they... Yeah, they're proud. Yeah. They ain't nothing no prouder. Right. And uh, see how they move and all that, you know, they they got something about them, you know. It's yeah, kind of like a bulldog. You see, you see a bulldog, you know that's a bulldog, the way they act, you know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not the way they look, but the way they act. Right, right. But, but the rooster is the... the perfect fighting machine. He got it all. Mm-hmm. Speed, yeah. dexterity, eye coordination, you know, everything. Power, cutting heart, ability, yeah. you know. They have to have heart, too, man. They stick and steel in them, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they don't feel it. Once right. they get started, they don't feel it. They don't even care, huh? Uh Yeah. Yeah. All they think about is getting that other one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But some dogs are like that. They're rare. They're rare. But they are dogs like that. That's true. That's true. And when you see one, you'll remember it. Yes, sir. What's some of the toughest spots in your memory to to go to down there in that area what you know for the dogs what uh you know always had good shows top guys i know there's several of them but maybe Traxler. what's that Traxler. Oh, okay larry Traxler. larry Traxler. yep during the 80s man i seen spot. every big time there was there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Good dog, good dog, good dog. Yeah. Did you ever see uh, Noonie go? Yeah. Was sure. she bad, like they say? Yes. First time I seen her go, I bet that fight didn't go four or five minutes. Mm. She swept in there, grabbed that in the head and the shoulder, and that was it. Mm. Uh, she won several, huh? Yeah. Uh, I think won about four, and then she ran into, I believe it was Shady Lady, wasn't it? It was uh, Bad Becky, I think. Bad Becky, yeah. Mm-hmm. I always get them two mixed up. Yeah. That yeah. was good litter, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Those were some bad bitches, too, Shady Lady and Bad Becky, huh? You ain't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. yeah. But I believe some of the roughest dogs I've ever seen was female. Yeah, we've had that discussion before, too. They just mean and nasty, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just try to do kill everything about one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a woman scorned, you know? Like that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can relate. My wife's kind of like that. She feisty, you know. She is little bitty girl. Yeah, you know? mine is too. <laughs> but mine did they never didn't have no have idea what a rooster fight was till she got with me. And yeah. she said, "Oh," and then <laughs> my daughter. She used to help me with a dog. She you know she was a nurse, and worked at the veterinary. Oh wow place, you know, when she was going to nurse school. Mm-hmm. She helped me with the dogs a lot. And she said, uh, I could I could watch them, but I don't believe I could watch one of ours. Mm-hmm. No. And she said, I, I'm going to go with you, though, and see it. It was a Halloween night. We went down there to track for And you know what she said after we won that first one? What's that? I want to handle the next one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yeah. I can do this. Huh. Yeah. But, and did she? Yeah. 
Good. Good. Not a not a big one, you know. Right, right. You know, here. I bet I bet them dogs listened to her, huh? She had a pretty good way with them. Uh, she's calm, you know, easy going. When they calm right down with them. Soft spoken, like that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's great. Yeah, my yeah. my kids were involved a little bit. My son mostly. He used to help me condition dogs, you know feed and all that you, you got to be pretty good with them you know yeah i live way out in the country you know and back in the road in front of the house was a dirt road mm -hmm. i had a little four-wheel yamaha and i built me a wedge of brace out on the side you know to hook a harness on yeah and it run them up and down the road that worked and, real uh, good she really liked that uh-huh and uh I had uh, 75 foot cable runs on the ground. And every time a car would go by, them dogs zip, 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 zip. Yeah, they, they was halfway in condition doing and, that, huh? Yeah, they stayed in good shape. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But I think you got to keep them in pretty good shape. I agree. You know, I agree. It don't make no do sense it. to have them fat, you know, big, fat. Yeah. Yeah, no. Nah. That's a common mistake. A lot of people like just getting them too fat. Because mm -hmm. all that fat breaks down into lactic acid, and then it makes them sick. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get all that gut fat out of them, you ain't going to last long. Yes, sir. What'd you like to feed in just regular food or even in keep? What'd you like to feed? I feed the Purina High Pro. And then I have to put, you know, meat in it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people around here deer hunted. And I got a lot of deer meat. Mm. And I keep it in the freezer, you know, and then lay it out. It's real, real lean. And we would uh, just boil it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then feed it to them with that puree and a high pro. And then to keep, you know... I didn't change too drastically. I don't. I'm not big on making drastic changes. Right. Uh, I think it throws the resistance out of whack. I do too. You're you're speaking my language, Mr. Paul. I I and, tell everybody uh, the same thing. You know, keep it yeah, simple and yeah, feed the same. You know, just more of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot like the rooster. You know, you feed the higher protein. You know, when you're working them and Slack when you slack off, start rest them. You slow down on the protein, up on the starches and sugar, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think it's no big uh, mystery. Most of it's just common sense. Yes, sir. And, you know. Throw a little greens in there and stuff, you know, a little garlic. Ain't no really big secret to it. Mm -hmm. Work, good clean water, good clean food. We've, we've got a, a little on most people here where I live because we've got really good soil. Really good, pure water, good, clear mountain air, four distinct seasons with nothing too hot or too cold, got good altitude, and let me tell you, that means a lot. I was going to say that. Going man. uphill or downhill, it yeah. means a lot. That's true. That, that's... So, you know, just. Just hanging the, in there with it. <coughs> yep, just the living conditions. That I mean, people don't think about that, you know. That, well, it's uh, a, I'm big on the environment. You can take the same chickens, you know, same blood. Mm -hmm. Take some of them, say, to Ohio and some to Florida and some here. Same blood, same family. And in three or four years, 
They ain't going to look the same, feel the same, or act the same. This is an environment. Right. Good point. And also, I'm big on uh, fresh soil, Mm -hmm. fresh ground. I believe most diseases and sicknesses come from the ground, the soil being used up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You yes, take sir. Uh, a place where there's not been any chickens for, say, 20 years, but they've been horses and cows and stuff there. <clears throat> you put them chickens there, they'll blossom like a bloom, you know. Yeah. Yep. There's a, you know, along those lines, you know, you know, the way you're looking, you're just looking at it natural and, like you said, the environment. But there's a whole study on that now. They call it epigenetics, you know, how you raise them, what they feed, the area they live in, all these yeah. influences, you know. So I never heard that word, but I know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to people, you know, I tell them, you know, older dog guys or myself or even older than me, you know. They did uh-huh. send things a certain way. They had good horse sense. They knew dogs, knew chickens, whatever it was, you know. Uh-huh. And then science does these studies, and they give names to the stuff that the dog guys used to do. That's the yeah. only difference. They put a, a label on it or or explain, you know, what it's doing, the effects it has, and all that. But people have been doing uh-huh. that for years, you know. Yeah, I couldn't tell you scientific right. stuff about it, but I know what I'm doing. Yes, sir. And how it reacts. Yeah. Just good common sense and experience, you know, being around them. And I yeah, think maybe yeah. that's why you had a easy transition to the dogs. They have a lot in common, you know, with the birds. Right. And here's what I think, too, about breeding or conditioning either one or both. Some people are natural. Some people can learn. And a lot of people can't never learn. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, that's that's yeah. true. Yeah. I know old, old guys that couldn't read or write. Didn't go past the fourth grade in school. But now when it comes to breeding chickens and, and taking care of them, getting them right, you had your hands full when you run up to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, heck, even, you know, even my dad, he started, he started school in third grade, you know, and he just mm-hmm. basically went to the class and they, they asked him, you supposed to be here? Yeah, I'm supposed to be here. You know, he didn't want to be with the younger kids, mm-hmm. you know, he wanted to be with the older kids. So he started in the third grade, went to eighth grade and that was all the schooling he had. And, you know, he was a farmer. He knew agriculture, knew livestock and mm-hmm. he could read and write and all that. Very, very intelligent, just common sense type of guy, you know. That's the way I grew up, kind of country, you know. Yeah. Around animals and, and uh, you know, we had horses and working cattle dogs and pigs, everything you could think of, you know. And uh, I kind of used some of that later on in life when it comes to the dogs, you know, how to take care of them, upkeep, feed, exercise, yeah. you know. I've got four of them great Pyrenees dogs. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have a chicken if it wasn't for them. Yeah. <laughs> they guard this place day and night. They'll they'll fight um, off. Well, I don't know if you have wolves there, but they, they hell on them coyotes. I know that. Oh, uh, yeah. We got coyotes here now. Uh, for the last four or five years, we've been seeing them. Before that, I never heard of one until I went to Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've got every one that you can think of here. But them dogs, they won't even let a, a hawk fly over the place. Wow. They'll follow it plumbed out mm-hmm. and let it land. Yeah. They, they good at their job. on one side of the hill on, across the way and one of them behind us. And they look like they're laying there asleep. And the least little sound or something that you don't even hear, they jump up, ready to go. They're on it. Yeah. And, and they're, they're they're big dogs, too, aren't they? Aren't they pretty good huh? size? 
No, about 80 pounds. Okay. Uh, and these I've got are, uh, this is the sixth generation that I've raised these dogs. Wow. You know, starting out of two dogs. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe they're getting better every year. Yeah. You're just a breeder by nature, Mr. Paul. Uh, I just seem like it's simple to me, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I just like it, you know. Yeah. And my house, when anybody comes in here, they think we're in a... Uh, Chicken and dog museum. <laughs> the walls is covered with pictures. I got one room plumb full of old books and magazines and picture cat picture albums and Do you have do you have little statues around the place too and like that? Yeah, some, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, it's what I like, you know, it looks tacky, but ain't nobody here being Donna, and that's it. Yeah, no, I'd be in, I'd be at home at your house, you know. Yeah. I, I love that Everybody stuff. Everybody comes here, said this is, I say, this is a peaceful place. <laughs> nice you know, and I was about a quarter of a mile road frontage through here. Right. And... Yeah, you can't see a light or a house or nothing. Well, I bet you when you go outside at night at your place, you can see the stars up in the sky, huh? Yeah, for, for just a little ways. Like, the sun don't shine in here till about 10 o'clock of the morning, and then by about 5, it's gone out the other side. Nice. There's a hill right in front of me, a hill right behind me, and a hill at the lower end. But it knocks all the wind off of me. And, uh, hell, they have wind storms, and it won't blow a top off one of my fins. Mm. Yeah. And when I bought it, I bought this place in 77, and there hadn't been no animals here for years. Mm -hmm. And... I just uh, free range everything. The, I lose a lot to varmints, but you know where they wander off out in the woods. But right. uh, the ones that makes it are usually pretty good. Nice. I believe in survival of the fish. <coughs> yes, sir. Now back then, if you, you know, if you had uh, one dog or two dog, whatever you considered your favorite, what 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 dog would that be? Would it be Bronco Evie? Bronco was the favorite dog I've ever had any, any what dog was that? with. And what? I guess old Weedy was my favorite dog mm -hmm. of mine. Yeah. What was the first name you said? Oh, Bronco? Bronco. Yeah, Bronco. Yeah. And then Edie, of course, I just had a force of him, you know. Right. But uh, Edie, he was a dog to make you like him, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And females? Who who was you fond of? I had a bitch it was out of Tonka and Robin. A oh, bitch okay. named uh um shit my mind slipping now. Sabrina was her name. Mm -hmm. I had two China and Sabrina, brother and sister. And this Sabrina she's a gamest dog. I I went into a one of them Zebo dogs mm -hmm. with her. That dog eats her chest out, her face off, and she screamed to get back at it, and finally stopped it by just knocking it back in the corner. Mm. That's hard. Or the dog finally just give up and didn't scratch. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was about an hour and ten minutes or. 15 of my right, right. Yeah. The longest fight we ever had was uh, against Robert T. Uh, Ken Allen, Robert T. Oh, yeah. Went three hours and ten minutes. Was that, he was uh, a ear dog and just held us out. 
you know, and we pushing and pushing and driving so it wore us down. Mm. And Mike Gregory had about to be in good shape, too. We had a, a, a four-time winner. It was rough, you know, tough. Yeah. But we couldn't ever get all into it. Was that Moon Doggy or what? What dog was that? Was that uh? His name was uh Gomez. Gomez. There you go. Watson's Gomez. Uh -huh. Was that him? Yeah, Gomez. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one went three hours. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, three ten. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, that shows me what the defensive dog was. I mean, your dog was hard to deal with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he won several. He won a bunch of them before he lost. You know, uh, Robert T. Yeah, he. Uh, I think I, I, I got. I think I he got by that fight. Did he build his confidence up or something? Because after that, he's done a lot. You know, better, mm -hmm. quicker. Right, right. But he was just that slick ear head type dog. Fast. If he come off that here, he'd be just before he snapped his fingers, he'd back on it. Mm. You know, and we never did get a chance to get a hold of him. Yeah, yeah. When we first started, we grabbed him and by the head and just body slammed him down on his back. And he come up on uh, holding on that ear, and it was never did get him off that hard. Mm. Wow. Uh, I like old Ken Allen. He's, I like him. He's a good fella. Yeah. Boy, he had some good that dogs. tornado bitch he had was something else. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see her go? One time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, him and old Buford Adams. Eh? I seen him go one time with her. Do you remember against who? No. I don't even remember who it was against. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it seen her on video. Tennessee. What's that? It was in Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, I've seen her on video. She was impressive, that's for sure. Yeah. I've heard a lot of stories about her. A lot of different things about how she's bred or how she was acquired and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I don't know nothing for certain. Right. Yeah, I've heard different things too about her did you ever heard of mary and austin a and m kennels yeah uh, and, didn't they have that red a... red dog or something or yeah what red they... dog uh-huh now you talk about a conscientious dog man i went down there and helped him roll some he killed dogs that i would have hitchhiked home with mm, wow and I brought some of them home. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were real damn dogs. Yeah. He was all bony old stuff. Mm hmm and, You know, bony maroney and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I had that, he had that red dog, red uh, Patrick Sandy. I had some out of that. And uh, I had uh, some out of uh, that Mandingo dog he had, and a bitch named uh, Annie Oakley. And I had some out of a bitch that comes from Tommy Sherwood named, uh, let's see, what was her name? Bill Starr. Mm. There was some good dogs. Right. Yep. Oh, it wasn't, uh, was Tommy Sherwood, was he Oklahoma Shorty? Yeah, yeah. Oklahoma Shorty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, had Panama already. He had good dogs, too. He was, uh, yeah. he was kind he was of a... real dog, man. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of a mentor to uh, Gene Matson. I interviewed Gene Matson. I don't know if you knew him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had he a good conditioner involved with a lot of great dogs, but yeah, he talks uh -huh. highly of Tommy. Yes, Tommy Sherry was a hell of a dog man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, happened, what happened to Ronnie Anderson? He died. I mean, but he just, 
I don't. Dated out of, out of the picture a long time before he yeah, died. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, you know, I met him in 1983, and then he come to my house because he was visiting different. Well, what it, he come to my house because I had a I was using a mail that was out of my stud and some of his uh, Tonka Red Baron Fred T stuff, you know. So uh -huh. we had a mutual friend. And I had met him years earlier, so we kind of knew each other. I talked to him on the phone. But he come out, that was in about uh, somewhere around 89 or 90, something like that. Maybe maybe even after 90. But uh, after that, I lost contact with him. And then I heard years later that he had passed away. I don't even know what or how or why. Or... I, met him, I met him down in Florida at a... A match out in the orange grove, and uh, he lost. He hauled a dog there from Oklahoma and lost with it. But I talked to him a good bit, and then I bought a dog. Got a dog from him, a dog uh, named Little Skeeter. Was a uh, Out of Romeo's old cricket. Okay, yeah. And Tonka, I think. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty good little dog, but he had skin problems. Uh, you know, and I could never keep him healthy. Right. If he got the least bit stressed, he'd break out. Mm. But he was a good little old dog. The hell, he was business about a. 30, 20, about a 30 pound match dog. <laughs> but I rolled him against some dogs a lot bigger than him, and I never seen one get him off his feet. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's a tough little old dog, but, yeah. you know, if you can't get one healthy, you can't do nothing with him. That's true. And I tried to beat him, and I tried twice, and it didn't take. Mm. Uh, this didn't try it no more. Yeah, he might have had some genetic defect or something, you know. That, I believe uh, it was. Uh, I I think it's something that's passed down through the mother. Mm -hmm. Sort of like red mange or something. Right. And Could it, be. Could be. That, yeah. That, uh, he was a really nice little dog, you know, just. Couldn't have the liking. Mm -hmm. Little yeah. brittle dog. Right. Yeah. Uh, Boy, it's it's nice reminiscing about these old times yeah, and old guys. I'll tell you who he was out there. Now, going back to me, he's out there. El Dos Bits Cotero. Oh, okay, there you go. And Romeo the Cricket. I wonder if he was... Uh, uh, I'll ask Vince and see if he remembers the dog, what it was. Because he had... Yeah. He, he's the one made that breeding. Or yeah. his friend did, I think. I think his buddy, yeah. they, they made that those bits to cricket. I think yeah, that's what. That's, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, Homer, Homer. I've got his pedigrees and all in there. You know, uh, old pedigree papers and mm -hmm. stuff. But I forget them. You know. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that breeding produced that little Homer dog. He was a little brindle dog. Too. Yeah, he he was a litter mate to Patrick's champion Homer. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, same breeding. Yeah. Well, I, well, let me think of it. I sort of think about Patrick. He lived at Cotero, Oklahoma, or Dakota, Cotero, Arizona. You right. Know. Right. I stopped by there one time and talked to him. He was a strange character. <laughs> yeah. I, I talked to him on the phone a lot, you know, but I never had met him. He used to call me every time he'd hear about me winning the match. Why don't you report them matches in Sport Dog Journal? I said, because, you know, that gives him some advertisement. Right, right. And uh, I told him, I said, look here, if you see me in there and if I report it be from somebody that beat me because I don't put them in there. Because I've spent a fortune run all over the United States trying to get good dogs and stuff. And I know people that sit down at their kitchen table 
and write out five reports and make a champions and grand champions out of dogs that had never been on pit, and that pisses me off. And that's true. So I do know that. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true, and you probably smart doing that. You didn't need the notoriety or the hassle that comes along with it, you know. Right. And uh, people like me knew who you were, if that means anything, you know. I, I, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. You know, I talked to a lot of people that you knew. You hear about certain things, certain people and what they've done and all that, you know. Uh -huh. uh, talking to other people, you know, like Ronnie Anderson, like, uh, yeah. you know, Mr. Gray and, you know, and uh, uh -huh. Jerry Bean, all them. A lot of old guys that I talked to, they knew you. And, and I knew yeah. who you were because I'd see your name. You know, you wrote articles before for Sporting Dog Journal and different yeah, things. Yeah. But, uh, I wrote one for uh, Crenshaw's book. Oh, did you? That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure did. A lot of time with Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. And he gave me, sent me one of the books and I autographed it and wrote a nice little thing in there. Not the article and everything. Yeah. Well, I keep the letters you send me. I don't throw them away. <laughs> I like the I like the little, you know, it's got the roosters on it and all that. And yeah. It's just sentimental to me, you know. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate your well, you support. Well, you know, Tudor, he, he liked roosters. He had oh, yeah. there at his place. And uh, yep. Carver had roosters. Mm-hmm. Well... Tudor and uh, Art Nemechek used to run a rooster pit in Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And then I've seen the uh, flowers that said come out the two doors and cock fights and dog fights. Yeah, yeah, uh, all that. On Sunday, yeah. you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Paul, we're out of time. I have a limit on my phone, but. Uh, well, I've it, enjoyed talking to you, and I hope I've kept everything straight in my mind. If yeah. I made any mistakes, it wasn't intentional. Right. It was great. Everybody's going to appreciate it. I know I do. And hopefully we can do this again soon, if you don't mind. Okie doke. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you take good care. Night. Night.